Here are three aiming fundamentals. Crosshair placement, peaking, and sensitivity. Presented by Fortnite Master. In this week's video, we want to expand on some of the info from our six tips for improving your aim video. We'll dive deeper into aiming fundamentals like crosshair placement, peaking methods, and finding a comfortable mouse sensitivity. Without wasting any time, let's get started. The first thing we want to go over is crosshair placement, one of the most important aiming skills in FPS games. It refers to where your crosshair is on the screen at any given moment, whether you're in a build fight, looking for kills, or camping in a corner. Having perfect crosshair placement means when an enemy appears on your screen, your crosshair is already in the perfect position for a headshot. This is extremely important for all points of the game. You will have a big advantage if you can shoot as soon as you see an enemy without needing to adjust your crosshair. The most common mistake newbies will make is placing their crosshair too low so they can see where they're running and look over their crosshair. The way you practice good crosshair placement is to always picture where your opponent would be if they were to appear on your screen and place your crosshair where their head would be. This means you'll have to accurately predict where your opponent will be coming from, which is why it's important to work on your game sense and make sure you have your sound on to listen to footsteps. It's also important to recognize that crosshair placement is a little different in Fortnite. Players can build up or drop down with ease, so it's not as common for people to run into each other on the same level. Fortnite has a lot more engagements between players at different heights, but that does not negate the value of good crosshair placement. For early engagements, you are more likely to get into a straight up gun battle with somebody on the same level as you, like when you're just running through buildings and rounding corners while looting. The traditional approach to crosshair placement still helps in this aspect of the game. Being able to shoot without adjusting your aim too much will almost always give you the upper hand. For build battles and fights between players at different heights, crosshair placement is more about predicting where your opponent is going to be and holding that angle with your crosshair. This requires you to get into some build fights and learn how and where players are most likely going to challenge high ground, or if you're playing low ground, where they will peek from above. Understanding how to peek effectively is crucial to getting better at Fortnite. We're going to explain a couple of ways to help you peek quickly and safely, ensuring you get the better of any trade you take. First, it's important to recognize the value of peaking right-hand angles in a third-person shooter like Fortnite. The crosshair naturally rests on the right side of your character model, meaning peaking around a right-hand corner requires you to expose only a small portion of your body. Peaking a left-hand corner, on the other hand, requires you to essentially walk completely in the open to get a shot off. For this reason, you should always aim for right-hand peaks to avoid left-hand peaks whenever possible. If you're forced into a corner and don't have a right-hand peek to take, focus on using building and edits to create that right-hand angle for yourself. Shoulder peeking is how you take advantage of those right-hand angles. This basically just means peeking over a corner or a wall with your shoulder for a quick shot before moving back behind cover or building cover. Again, this only really works with right-hand peeks, but once you get them down, you'll find yourself doing this a lot. Speed and position are also important factors in peeking. Anytime you're peeking for any reason, try to expose as little of your body as possible and get behind cover immediately when you're done shooting. A lot of players stay exposed for much longer than they need to and show more than half of their body while peeking, when you really just need to expose a small portion of your upper body to get shots off. Remember, if you need to scout the area and don't plan on taking shots, you don't have to peek. Use your third person camera to look around. Only peek when you're going to take shots, and then as soon as you're done shooting, quickly get back behind cover. The fastest way to peek is called spacebar peeking. It was the same method people used for ghost peeking back in the day, and even though ghost peeking was nerfed, spacebar peeking is still the quickest way to peek for one or two shots. It is essentially another way to crouch and uncrouch, but much faster than using the crouch button. To spacebar peek, you simply use the spacebar or jump button to uncrouch, and then use your normal crouch button to crouch again. This is much faster than using your crouch button for both, and it allows you to get shots off while only exposing yourself for a split second. Another important concept to understand while peeking is how long you can peek in certain scenarios. If a good team of players is actively looking and shooting at you, you might only be able to peek for a couple of AR shots, whereas if you're third partying players that aren't paying any attention, you can probably afford to peek for longer. For longer peaks, however, you never want to have your character stagnate. Always be strafing side to side or moving slightly if you're peeking for an extended period of time, so you're not an easy headshot for anybody with a sniper. Lastly, a lot of our viewers have been asking for advice on how to set their mouse sensitivity. Here are some tips. You want your sensitivity to be low enough so you can control your crosshair perfectly in all scenarios. It moves exactly where you want it in your head, not too short and not too far. 
In our experience, low sensitivity helps you build muscle memory for arm movements, like the distance you need to move your mouse to do a 180 in-game. Note that even with low sensitivity, you will still be using your wrist for small adjustments. But be warned, you might need a relatively large mouse pad if you're using low sensitivity to make sure you have full range of movement. At the bare minimum, you should be able to do a 180 degree without lifting your mouse. For Fortnite, however, we would consider choosing a sensitivity that lets you do a full 360 degree turn in one mouse movement, as the game can get extremely hectic at times. With a really high sensitivity, all of your movements are mainly done with your wrist, which is harder to build muscle memory for, in our opinion. Although, some players are extremely accurate when using high sensitivity, so it ultimately comes down to personal comfort. The in-game settings aren't the only factor that goes into sensitivity. Mouse DPI is also a huge part of it. Some mice will automatically come with high DPI, and some with low, so be sure to look at your mouse's DPI before playing around with in-game settings. For reference, the most commonly used DPIs in shooters are 400 and 800, with the lower number equating to lower mouse sensitivity. Now, let's get into some concrete ways to find the right sensitivity for you. For these, you want to hop into Playground and head over to the Challenge Games area above Leaky Lake. We're going to break this down into three different tests for mouse or controller sensitivity, targeting sensitivity, and scope sensitivity. For the base mouse and controller sensitivity, go to one of the shooting ranges, grab five pump shotguns, and get started. Basically, you just want to jump around and take shotgun shots at the robots. You can practice a ton of things like general shotgun aim, 180 shots, flick shots, shots after building, and edit plays. When you find a good sensitivity, you should feel in control of your movement and aim at all times. You should also be able to hit about 90% of your shots. For targeting sensitivity, grab a couple of assault rifles and start another round on the shooting range. For this one, we recommend tracking one robot until it's dead, then flicking to another one you see. Rinse and repeat. If you find it hard slowly tracking or are flicking too far when you switch, your targeting sensitivity is probably a little too high. Continue adjusting your sensitivity until you feel completely comfortable tracking and hitting most of your flicks onto new robots. For scope sensitivity, head to the furthest right shooting range and grab a semi-auto sniper. Focus on tracking the moving robot as it runs across and taking shots every time it turns to go back in the other direction. Note that you will need to lead your shots to hit this one. Once you get comfortable with the lead distance, concentrate on flicking to the lead distance and hitting those shots. If you keep flicking too far, lower your scope sensitivity a little, and if you're flicking too short, raise your sensitivity and try again. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. On the right side of the screen, you can click one of the two videos if you want to watch more guides. On the left, hover over the Fortnite Master icon to subscribe to our channel. As well, make sure to click the bell so you don't miss any of our high quality guides. From over here at Fortnite Master, my name is The Saved One, and we're out. Peace.